So this is the Bond Ranch behind me, or the Bond Fire behind me, pardon me. Uh, it's currently, we're estimating at around 100 acres and 0% contained. So it's a large grass fire that began burning. Texas A&M Forest Service was requested uh, to come assist with this, uh, with aviation resources and heavy equipment. Any idea on how it may have started? Not at this time. Um, we, you know, it's, it's too quickly that we've been on scene. Uh, so locals are probably still looking into it, and as we get more information, we'll publish it. Um, any structures damaged? Not that I'm aware of at this time. How many firefighters? I see Justin, Eagle Mountain, I mean Blue Mountain. There's a bunch. There's at least 10 from Texas A&M Forest Service, uh, and there's been multiple fire departments coming in and out. Um, here in Tarrant County, there's lots of fire departments to come around, and I imagine that most of them are here to help. The air assets that flew in, where did they come from? So those are with the Texas A&M Forest Service. They're on contract with us. Uh, those are single-engine air tankers. They flew out of mineral wells, uh, and they've been scooping water off of Eagle Mountain Lake and dropping it on this fire to help knock down any activity. And how many planes total? So there's three planes, uh, or pardon me, there's three single-engine air tankers, and then there's one air attack, which is a supervisory plane actually flying circles directing them. The high, the high heat, obviously, it's over 100. I mean, clearly hot, hot conditions for guys to be fighting this fire. Absolutely. It makes it more difficult. We can't work for as long without having to take breaks and cool off. Um, all of that heat that's affecting us is also affecting all of this grass and brush that's out there. So fuel um, are all very dry and very receptive to fire occurring. It seems like we've gone from a, a wet spring to a pretty quick, you know, dry season, and now things are starting to ramp up as we get into the end of July and August. What does this say for fire season coming up? We're in it. This is normal fire. This is the normal uh, period of time that we call fire season here in North Texas. Late end of July, moving into August, September. Um, we are now, you know, we can very comfortably say that we're in fire season here in North Texas, and this is something that we need to be paying attention to and be aware of as we move forward for the next couple months. What do you have to say to a lot of the folks out there just starting cigarettes, you know, different things like that, no welding? So one of the biggest things and one of the biggest ways to help your local departments, whether they're paid, volunteers, uh, members from the state, myself, you know, all of these departments uh, have to respond to every fire that occurs. 90% of wildfires in Texas are caused by humans. The less fires that start means there's more resources to put them out. So anybody can be careful with how they're, how they're acting around fire, uh, making sure you're not dragging chains, being careful with welding, being careful with cigarettes or any kind of flaming materials that may fall out of your vehicle. All of those reduce the number of fire starts. So this is mainly just a pretty big brush fire. It is. It's a big grass fire. The aerial shots were showing planes getting up to five, six, seven, eight feet. I mean, was this fire considered moving? It was. So five, you know, eight feet in a large open grass field with some brush. That is absolutely showing some pretty active fire behavior. Uh, it was making. Um, some pretty considerable movements and runs behind us. Um, at this time, you know, you can see behind me, it has definitely died off with the reuse of the aerial resources, uh, and crews are now going to go around and actively work to mop up any piece of still burning material they can find. Is this your second, third, fifth fire of the day? Or? This is my third of the day. Uh, Texas A&M Forest Service has been requested to four at this point here in uh, North Texas. Can you talk about with the wind, even the wind's big enough now, even though the fire is Pretty much out in the park and hot spots and stuff. What, how does that affect how y'all go about it while I'm dealing with all those scenarios? So, when you have such a large area burning like we do, we can't put it all out. Even if we, you know, we have a large body of water nearby, that's a ton of water to try and put out 100 acres of actively burning material. So, what we're going to do is we're going to burn it, we're going to put out as much uh, material as we can around the edge of it, typically 100 to 150 feet. Uh, that way we can prevent anything from being blown across the line. With high winds like this, that distance is likely to increase just to make sure that if the winds do pick up, nothing's going to get picked up with them and blown outside our containment lines. How did the winds affect, I heard uh, FB talking about the winds keep shifting and it was making it harder. How, is, that, is that a normal thing for a fire like this? Or? Wind shifts occur all the time. It's something you have to plan for. Um, if the wind shifts drastically, you know, if you're talking a 90 degree wind shift, um, what used to not be a very active section of the fire can suddenly become very active uh, and began burning or begin burning in a different direction. So it is very con we have to be very conscious of what the wind is constantly doing because if we do notice a wind shift, you know that suddenly presents higher increased danger for firefighters or members of the public. Dozers are on scene too. We do. We have heavy equipment from Texas A&M Forest Service as well as Tarrant County precincts. Um, so there's dozers, there's track loaders, there's motor graders. There's a wide variety of equipment behind me that's going to work. This afternoon we had a grass fire pop up. Uh, 
a construction company here that's doing underground uh, cabling. Uh, they were cutting some rebarb up, sparks. It took off from this corner here and took off to the top of the hill. And when it got to the top of the hill, the wind shifted a little bit and split the fire two different ways, headed towards the northeast and then headed towards the northwest, which made it, you know, difficult. Uh, we got people out here as quick as we could. I can't tell you how many fire trucks, brush trucks, and personnel we have, but it's more than a handful. We got a bunch. Uh, Service brought in aerial support. How big of a they brought in how big of what? How big of an impact? Oh, it's a wonderful. You see them guys drop water. They can they can drop water faster and put something out faster than these fire trucks can. And these guys on the fire trucks are good. They can just cover a bigger area, and they, it takes them about four minutes to go to Eagle Mountain Lake, fill up, make another sweep. We've had three of them today, and they just follow each other. Can you talk about and, the evacuations in the nearby neighborhood? So. What I know about evacuations is there were probably about, I'd say maybe six or seven homes back over on Peton Road by the Gilmore Creek area that uh, they asked the people to leave. Shortly after we asked them to leave, it was all clear. So it was just a precaution because the fire jumped Peton Road for just a little bit, maybe a third of an acre. They put it out real quick, and then they started pushing back uh, towards Bonds Ranch here. How hard is it working for these firefighters working in this heat? It's terrible. They have to wear their bunker gear. Most of their bunker gear probably weighs, what, 35, 40 35, pounds? 40 pounds yeah. Now, wildfire stuff is a little bit lighter. You know, it may be 20 pounds. Uh, but still, when you're in this 105, 106 degree heat, and then you got the heat from the fire and the heat off of the ground. Uh, yeah, it'll take a toll on you, so you really have to stay hydrated. And we're rotating a lot of people out. We've got strike teams from Denton County here. We've got some from Wise County. And then we've got a ton of Tarrant County. I saw some Can you elaborate a little bit about the rotation? Hi there. How long? Say it again. Can you elaborate a little bit? more about that rotation uh, of the of the personnel yeah how, so how long they you rotate it depends on on how much firefighting they're into but a lot of times after about two to three times that they fill up they'll send them to rehab to to rest up sometimes it may be one time depends on how much fire they get into so you have to have a lot of people to rotate out in this in this temperature. We've been fortunate that we have a lot of resources in Tarrant County and our neighbors and with the Forest Service here to bring what we need and bring it here pretty quick. So Do you know about what time this fire started? Or what time y'all noticed it? It probably started about three or three thirty somewhere in there because I was over off of thirty about three thirty and, and started seeing the, the, the plume. Did the construction crew that caused the fire? Are they the ones they called in or did they try to put it out? And that I don't know yet. I've been out here on the scene and I haven't been able to check reports or talk to alarm center or anything like that. So.